Oh. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on the new Main Street TV. And just there we go. Having a little technical difficulty this morning, but our good man, James, got it under control. As I wiggled a wire and it started working. He again. wiggled a wire. Okay. Well, I mean, it's better than hitting it with a hammer. That's that's what I that's what I paid all that money for college. Right? Right. I had to do. <laughs> Hey, at least he's not flipping me the bird first thing this morning. All right, of course, Jennifer here with our good friend Pete Wilson to start off the morning with a morning news update, which is brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. If you're looking to buy or sell or have any real estate needs, please give Nia a call, 740-418-4135, and she'll be out working hard for you. So, all right, Pete Wilson, heading out to a busy weekend. Absolutely. The <laughs> He's there. He's there. <laughs> Got to wiggle another piece. They always told me I was a nothing in this business. <laughs> oh, there I am. Okay. There he well, is. There's something at least. All well, right. we were going to blame him on, on uh, having a green shirt on, but he doesn't. So. No, it's, it's blue. It's I'm blue. I'm not colorblind. Okay. I, I know better. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. There he is. Okay. The Vinton County Wild Turkey Festival is off and running, Jennifer. It is. Uh, they had the uh, opening ceremonies uh, last night, uh, the first evening. Of course, it will continue on the downtown streets of MacArthur through Sunday afternoon, about five o'clock. Uh, but last evening uh, at the uh, opening ceremonies, which were at five o'clock, uh, Red Thompson Jr. of our staff was there and uh and some heroes, local heroes, got to cut the ribbon, sports heroes. They were, of course, the Vinton County girls basketball team, state runner-ups, of course, in that recent tournament back in March over in Dayton. Uh, a lot of the people lined up there cutting the ribbon are those girls. But you also see the 2019 royalty of the Vinton County Wild Turkey Festival. Uh, you see one of the coaches there, Bob Grillo. Uh, he was there. And then uh, the other principal involved in the ribbon cutting was Olivia Mayers who was a, uh, a uh, finalist, uh, a finalist, a qualifier for the state cross-country meet back in the fall. So they gave her some attention as well. A good crowd was there. The Vinton County High School uh, Band performed. And uh, it's all out there, Jennifer. Uh, even though uh, COVID-19, the, the festival is actually has the distinction of being the first major street festival of this year. And so uh, there's some significance to that because, of course, about everything was canceled last year. Uh, take a, we'll take a look at the Midway here now at the Turkey Festival. This is right downtown, uh, right in downtown MacArthur on Route 50. And uh, there are, um, you know, all the vendors are there, uh, as well as uh, some of the hometown booths, uh, entertainment uh, set there. You see uh, there you see the Midway there uh, makes your mouth water just looking down there. You, you can get pizza. You can get roasted pecan drinks. I know there's elephant ears there. There's a bunch of hometown booths with sandwiches and, and all. And remember, when you uh, when you visit the festival uh, and the hometown booths, you know you're helping those groups raise money for uh, local things. So uh, by all means, you have uh, uh, three more days to visit the Turkey Festival tonight. There's going to be some uh, very good entertainment. Uh, Red Thompson Jr. interviewed a couple of those uh, folks who are going to entertain tonight, and they are regional performers who are trying to make a name for themselves. Uh, one of those is Eric Atkinson. He is from Athens originally, and he is making an impact in Nashville already. He is going to be uh, featured uh, on the stage at 7 o'clock tonight. There is Eric with a, a plaque that he recently won for one of his country songs in Nashville. Uh, he uh, will be available, or rather, he will be on the stage tonight at 7 o'clock. This is free entertainment. You need to bring your own chairs. Of course, space them out the best you can uh, because of the COVID-19 situation. Then at 9 o'clock, uh, there will be, there will be uh, Michelle Robinson and her band performing. Uh, that will be on the heels of the Eric Atkinson show. So the two free musical shows uh, at the stage of the Wild Turkey Festival tonight. Saturday, of course, will be a very big day, a host of things going on all day. Uh, then in the evening, that'll be uh, that'll be uh, the big attraction. The Grand Prix will be at 6 o'clock, followed by the Queen's Crowning for the new royalty uh, at 7 p.m. And then uh, following that, there will be uh, 
performances by the Chase Band at 7.30 and Red Planet at 9 o'clock. So a lot of free musical entertainment lined up. There you see uh, Red Planet, a, a, a look at them, uh, performing at 9 o'clock Saturday at the Wild Turkey Festival. Sunday, the final day, uh, there's a, a baby contest that always uh, attracts a lot of entries. There's also a car motorcycle show. If the weather's good, you know, they'll probably attract a lot of entries as well. And the weather forecast uh, is pretty good, you know, maybe just a, a little bit on the cool side, but it's not going to be too hot. I know that can be a deterrent, and uh, hopefully the rain will stay away as well. I know the forecast is pretty good for Saturday. You'll give it. You'll give us. You'll give us the forecast. I know just a little bit later, but it is fairly favorable. All right, and our own Matt McKee will be up at the Turkey Festival all. all well, not all three days. He'll be up there two days, and I believe Mindy Barry Eisnoggle will cover Sunday. But our schedule for live remotes up there, well, where they will give you uh, up-to-date reports of what's going on, maybe interview a few people. This evening, 5 to 7 p.m. on WCGO, that's Matt. Then on Saturday, 1 to 3 p.m., that's on WKOV, that'll be Matt. And then Mindy Barry Eisenogle, our good friend uh, who works in Wellston now, still helps us out here on the radio from time to time. Uh, she's very personally love her when she's out there. Uh, that will be from 1 to 3 p.m. on Sunday on WYRO. Of course, Red Thompson Jr., uh, when he's not hitting the elephant ear stand, will be uh, <laughs> will be on the midway taking lots of pictures, which you will see, I promise you, in Wednesday's paper. My fingers are crossed. But we hopefully we'll hopefully we'll have a lot of good good coverage there. So all this happening this weekend at the Wild Turkey Festival. Uh, it's really amazing because uh, as as recently as the first weekend of April the organizers weren't even sure they were going to be able to do it. That's right. And they so had to they, pull it off pretty quick. They, they brought it together. Yes. And so uh, so it's a, it, it's very nice to have this normalcy again uh, and right here in one of our hometowns in uh, MacArthur. All right. Uh, there was uh, big doings uh, last uh, yesterday in three different places as the National Day of Prayer was observed locally. There was a program at noon at the Vinton County Courthouse uh, in Wellston at the Life Source Apostolic Church, and then here in Jackson at the Family Life Center of the Christ United Methodist Church. And this was the site, if you're watching on TV uh, or on your uh, computer, uh, this was an impressive site in front of the Family Life Center. Thank you so much to the Jackson Fire Department and the Wellston Fire Department for bringing their ladder trucks. They hoisted this large American flag that's owned by the Jackson Fire Department uh, to be outside the Family Life Center while this was going on. It was a very impressive sight, and it fit right in with the patriotic theme of this year's Prayer Day ceremony. And the Prayer Day is a national thing with lots of local observances. The theme this year was, Lord, pour out your love, life, and liberty. And so uh, the Jackson presentation almost always features, uh, almost always features uh, uh, a large flag. Often they're unfurling uh, Kerry Montgomery's big flag, uh, but you know they wanted to avoid people be standing close together, and so they did this instead. A very, very nice touch. Uh, these kids right here are from the Truth Christian School in Hamden. Uh, there they are uh, at attention during the Pledge of Allegiance at the uh, ceremony in Vinton County. And uh, back uh, in Jackson, here are the organizers of that ad hoc committee of the Jackson uh, of the Jackson County Day of Prayer. This basically represents uh, Jackson and Oak Hill, as Wellston has, has its own National Day of Prayer. But these folks make the Day of Prayer happen in Jackson. In the front row, you see uh, Pastor Terry Cavanaugh and Pastor Stan Howard. In the back row, from the left, uh, you have Dr. Marcy Shepard, the superintendent of the Oak Hill Schools. And then you have two uh, really pillars of the National Day of Prayer for a long time here in Jackson. And that is uh, the Reverend Janie Carl of the Christ United Methodist Church and the uh, indefatigable Sandy Borden, she does everything. She has uh, been a stalwart with the National Day of Prayer program in Jackson County for a long, long time. And so they made that happen last night. Our own Matt McKee did an excellent job as the master of ceremonies last night. They allowed me to do uh, the prayer for uh, the media, and so I thank them for being, being able to do that. Back at Wilson, uh, it was at the Life Source Apostolic Church, and this young lady here uh, did a great job uh, singing. I'm going to get her name for you. Her name is Carrie King, 
and uh, she is from the Fire Church in Wellston. She did a solo while uh, also playing the piano, and uh, Todd Compton, our sports editor, who put on his prayer day hat to work for us uh, uh, Thursday night at Wellston, was very impressed with her uh, singing, and so he took her picture as one of the represented pictures that we hope to run in the paper, and that is Carrie right there. And that is Michael Jodertacek. I'm not gonna say that again now. Uh, he was the guy who made the Prayer Day program happen in Wellston. Uh, he is the pastor of the Life Source Apostolic Church. He's also a chaplain for the Wellston Police Department, and he is the school resource officer for the Wellston City Schools, very highly thought of in Wellston. Uh, he made the program happen there. Our own John Pelletier served as the uh, served as the master of ceremonies, did some introductions. His wife, former Wellston Mayor Connie Pelletier, gave words of welcome, standing in for uh, Charlie Hudson, uh, Wellston Mayor, who's recovering from knee replacement surgery. And in Jackson, I shouldn't, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Randy Evans. Mayor Evans was there at the Jackson program to give a welcome as well uh, as, well as uh, making an official proclamation uh, declaring National Day of Prayer in the city of Jackson. All, all, the, way, all the way around, uh, Jennifer, I know this because I was at one ceremony, we had reporters at the other two ceremonies. It went very smoothly. And this day of prayer is reverential, but it's also, honestly, in my mind, very uplifting, very, very positive as they, uh, as they address uh, the different themes in the community and offer up music as well. At the Jackson uh, ceremony, there wasn't any live music, but there was video music from two musical groups from Oak Hill schools and one from the Jackson schools, as well as a soloist from one of the nice. Jackson choir groups. So we'll have a lot of coverage on the National Day of Prayer on our media platforms, and we'll have a lot of coverage in the Wednesday edition of Telegram. We'll gather it all together and throw her in there Wednesday. On the COVID-19 front, the Vinton County Health Department issued a new report on Thursday and uh, wasn't really very good from a relative uh, standpoint. You see the infographic up there on the uh, television screen or on your computer monitor. There was four new cases in the last day of in, in the last day reported by the health department because there was 737 concern, confirmed cases as of Wednesday. There was also five new probable cases. So this is a lot for Benton County in one day. Four new confirmed cases, five new probable cases. The number of active cases zoomed up from three to ten. So Yikes. We, we hope it's just one of those bad blips, and yeah. you know, over 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 the over the period, recent period, it's been pretty positive as far as there being uh, very few cases. Uh, but uh, the good news from Benton County is there there is no hospitalization still, and there were no new confirmed deaths. The Wellston City Council met last night, and our associate editor, Phil Buckingham, who does an excellent job reporting on the public affairs front, he was there to uh, take this picture. Uh, Lindley Carey uh, is the new fourth ward councilman in the city of Wellston. She, there she is on the left. If you're watching on television, she was sworn into office officially uh, by the council president, David McWilliams, who is reading the oath of office right there, and she is reciting it. Uh, this was her first meeting as the fourth ward councilman. She replaces Anthony Brenner, and Anthony had a good reason for stepping down as fourth ward councilman. He is the new service director in Wellston, of course. And Lindley was appointed by the Northern Caucus of the Jackson County Republican Party Central Committee uh, just last week. So uh, congratulations to Lindley, and we wish her the best in her job. Okay, up Benton County Way, very important development on the elections board there. The elections board earlier this week hired their two new staffers, the full-time staffers for the office uh, in the elections office. Remember, they have not, they have been without any staff for over a month uh, due to the resignations of the former director and deputy director. The new director, the new director is Melissa Hale and the new deputy director is Chastity Sowers. We're going to get more information about them and their backgrounds, but they will officially be on the job next Tuesday. So that is a big step forward for the Benton County Board of Elections. Uh, the current elections board worked very hard in the last month to keep the office running without any full-time staff and also interviewing and choosing the new director and deputy director. Those uh, board members are Nikki Harvey, Kim Wortman, Carolyn Brown, and Benita Peters. 
All right, uh, back to the Vinton County Health Department. They wanted us to announce that the health department is closing early today. Don't know exactly why, but they will be closing at noon today. So if you have business at the health department, uh, they close at noon today. Uh, as you might guess, Jennifer, a lot going on this weekend. Not only do we have the Turkey Festival in MacArthur, but we have a prom going on in Oak Hill. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. Uh, we hope to have some follow-up coverage from that uh, next week to show you. They're gonna pick a prom king and queen. They're going to have the Grand March at 6 o'clock. They've got that set up so the public can come. Uh, they're going to try to space them out so, uh, you know, it'll be safe and all. But the Grand March will be kind of at the entrance to the high school. That's where the kids will go in. They'll have their pictures taken. I presume they may be introduced as well. And then, of course, that is uh, the beginning to what will be a great night for uh, the kids at Oak Hill High School and their guests. They'll have a sit-down dinner. They'll have the dance, of course. And then they will have an after party. Uh, elsewhere in the county, uh, the Jackson Band Boosters will conduct a veal sale uh, up, at the, up at Alumni Stadium. It will be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. It'll be in their booth where they do their normal food sales during football games, soccer games, and other big events up there. Uh, the veals only cost $5 each. They're, they're those homemade Jackson County veals. Uh, they'll also have Kona Ice up there uh, available as well. If you don't want to get out of your car, they will do a car hop type service as well. And of course, all the money will support the Jackson uh, Band Boosters, and they've got a big band to support there, and they weren't able to do some of their fundraisers during the year. Once again, they want to emphasize you can just park in some designated spots and they will come out and serve you. You don't even have to walk up to the concession stand. The Jackson City Library is going to have a sidewalk sale. Uh, Roger Donaldson and his crew will be out working from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, they're going to have books, furniture, computer equipment, and much more for sale. It's kind of like their version of a yard or garage sale. And, it, and it's not just books, it's more stuff. It will be, once again, right outside of the library from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They do ask you to wear a mask and be aware of social distancing while you're on their property. The library is located at 21 Broadway Street in Jackson. All right, Jennifer, I lied to you yesterday. Um, <gasps> Please, please forgive what? me, but, but I received some bad information <clears throat> and I didn't know better. But the Jackson Ironman actually did play on Wednesday night at Greenfield. The softball was postponed and a presumption was made that the baseball was postponed too, but they decided to play. Okay. And guess what? The Ironman had it tough against last place Greenfield. They were tied going into the seventh inning, but they rallied and ended up winning that game by a score of eight to four. And oh, they that's are, our boys. They are the Frontier Athletic Conference champions this year. They have to share it, share that honor Woo! with Miami Trace because Miami Trace last night defeated Greenfield in their last game five to nothing. So those two teams finish atop the Frontier Athletic Conference, one loss each to each other. Jackson lost to Miami Trace on Jackson's home field, but then Jackson defeated Miami Trace at Miami Trace very early in the season. Jackson has only lost two games this year, Jennifer. Miami Trace has only lost one, and they're in the same bracket in the, in the tournament, so they may play again. We'll oh, see no. what happens. They'll have, to, they'll have to beat some other teams to get there, and we don't want to presume anything. But last night, the Ironmen played again, and they played a perennial area power, Wheelersburg, who's been to the state tournament before, and they beat Wheelersburg 4-2 to two last night. Nice. So the Ironmen, if I'm keeping up with them, I believe they're 17-2 and two now. One of the best records they've had in years. Congratulations yep. to Coach Josh McGraw and his crew. Uh, I believe That's they have awesome. a game this weekend at Columbus Bishop Hartley. And Columbus Bishop Hartley, Coach McGraw tells me, is a top 10 team in the state of Ohio. So another big challenge for our boys. Next week, there are three home games scheduled as of right now. And if, they're, if they do play in their home, of course, we will be there to cover that game on uh, Fox Sports 1330 AM and 105.3 FM. In other games last night, Wellston defeats Trimble in baseball 19-3, and Vinton County defeated Athens 5-4. That was a big win for the Vikings because Athens was tied for first place in the TVC. In softball, Vinton County defeats Oak Hill 9-4. Wellston defeats Trimble 10 to nothing. And on Wednesday, in addition to Jackson's win over Greenfield McLean, River Valley defeated Vinton County in baseball 2-1 in 12 innings. Okay, another event that I wanted to mention besides the sidewalk sale and the bill sale and the turkey festival, there is a Jeepin' for Kids off-road ride scheduled tomorrow. Uh, Jaffe is doing this. They're joining forces uh, with uh, Mobile Mechanic to do this. 
and it will, the signups will be at 10 a.m. at the Apple City Motorcycle Club Clubhouse. Uh, that's on Clubhouse Road, just outside Jackson. There, off Route 35. There'll be a $40 registration fee, and riders will receive a, will receive a goodie bag, a T-shirt, and food will be available before the ride. I know there's been lots of interest in this, as it's way as it's a way for uh, it's a way for families to have an outing together while supporting a good cause. Uh, Jaffe, of course, uh, does a lot of things in the community beyond just the Apple Festival. So for more information, if you're interested in getting in on that, uh, call 740-710-9673. Once again, 740-710-9673. Okay, Jennifer, is that enough? That's great, Pete. Thank you. All right. Well, you're very welcome. And I've got to gather all this stuff up for print. So I'm going to head downstairs. That's I'll right. I'll give up my seat to the versatile, talented, and beautiful Courtney Leach. Woo! Miss okay. Courtney! I, I gave her a lot to live up to. <laughs> That's right. All right. Pete's wor morning news update, of course, brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. If you are looking to buy or sell or have any real estate needs, please give Nia a call, 740-418-4135, and she'll be out working hard for you. All right, um, let's head on over to your zip printing weather forecast where don't forget graduations are coming up and you can pick up those graduation yard signs, banners, shirts, uh, napkins, and much more by visiting yourtotalmedia.shop and zip printing. Find out all of the things that they're offering. All right, do not forget, please do not forget, this is your Mother's Day weekend weather forecast and Today, uh, looking like some rain in the forecast. Um, I know I had some rain in my house this morning. Partly cloudy, some isolated showers. Highs around 62 today. For tonight, partly cloudy with scattered showers. Lows around 36. And then on Saturday, not too shabby. The uh, temperature is a little lower, but no rain in the forecast on Saturday with highs around 60 degrees. And look, they even have that little sunshine thing out there. Uh, Sunday on your Mother's Day, probably going to have to move the party inside if possible, as there is about an 80% chance of rain on Sunday with highs around 66 degrees. And that rain continues on Sunday night into Monday. So you never know, it may change uh, in this in the time between now and then, but if not, might, if you were planning on a cookout, might want to have a plan B as well um, and uh, move that party inside if possible. All right. <coughs> God, got all choked up. Miss Courtney is here today. Uh, and we're ready to party. We are. It's Friday. <coughs> I'm going to choke to death. Don't do that. It's Friday. <laughs> I know. Save that for a, I don't know, <clears throat> Saturday. I know, Monday. right? Well, no, because Saturday is your Friday. Kind of. Like, yeah, I have to work all day today, so yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, so. No fry yays for me. No, so. I'm sorry. We but, always do that to you, and you're like, yeah. Yay. But inside your head, you're like, no. It's okay. <laughs> Should be a lot of fun this weekend, though, I would think, um, restaurant-wise, as James so aptly pointed out to me this morning, that, of course, it is Mother's Day. So right. should have quite a few, I would think, families and and uh, people coming in to celebrate with their moms as yeah, well if they're coming. See. Maybe some friends coming into town that I don't normally get to see. So that's always yeah. a lot of fun yeah, as well. Yeah, you'll see lots of mommies this weekend, I'm sure. Yeah, I would say so. Yep. And I will say that my day started off lovely because... Yes, I'm very excited for this story. Well, Courtney brought me a donut. Oh, yes. Yes. So, no, I have this Marley story, and I've just got to tell it. So... <laughs> Everybody knows that we have this dog. She's a yellow lab rescue named Marley, and she's been here on the program a couple times. But um, so Marley travels, and she's pretty, like, literally lazy and chill. Like, she's a lab, but she just doesn't do much of anything. Right. So we take her places. I mean, we take her to hotels, and we she goes to hotel bars and, you know, all kind of fun stuff, breweries, right. whatever. And she's always super chill. Well, there's one thing in the world that totally flips Marley out. And I, I've talked to the vet about it. We've analyzed her mental capacity, <laughs> whatever. Flies. Oh, yeah. Terrified of flies. Like, 
I mean, like, l- loses her mind, hides in a closet, terrified from flies. Oh, really? So we talked to Dr. Parker about it and, and whatever, and... Our assessment probably is that maybe she got stung by a bee or something at some point and she relates just puts that relates that buzzing sound to something, bad. to something bad that's going to happen to her. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as you as you move on and you feel so bad because she physically like loses her mind with, over these flies. <laughs> and so we were sitting outside on the deck yesterday, and of course you have the screen door open and didn't think much about it. Well, evidently this big fly got in. So I'm like, why is she acting so crazy? And Jamie's like, oh, there's a fly in here. I'm like, oh, no. And typically he runs around with a fly swatter until <laughs> he gets it, and then he'll he'll say, <laughs> this is a really long story, but he'll say, got it, Marls, and then she'll come out. She's fine. And then she's like, okay, dad got it for me, right? <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> So yesterday we're, you know, the fly kind of disappeared and he thought that, so we have a sliding door in our bedroom too. So it was in the bedroom. He uh, opened the sliding door and shut the curtains to it and thought that it had like gone out. It had departed the house, like Elvis left the building. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go jump in the shower and then we'll cook dinner and whatever. And never, ever, ever has this happened. Now, you just have to picture this. So Jen's in the shower, and we have, like, a, you know, a tub shower thing. Mm -hmm. And I see this, like, head pop, you know, through the shower curtain. (laughs) And I'm like, what are you doing? And she's just, like, looking at me like. It's here. It's not gone. And the next thing I know, giant leap dog in the middle of shower (laughs) with me. Never in all the time we've had this dog. I mean, to give her a bath, she has a lab. She likes water, but like baths are a whole different story. No, completely different. I mean, lost her mind, jumps in shower through the shower curtain, and I'm standing there in the middle of the shower with a dog like at my feet, and she's just looking at me like, "Help! Help! It's gonna get me!" So I'm yelling for Jamie and he comes running in thinking I've fallen or something. And I'm like, I need help. And he's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, just open the shower curtain. (laughs) And he's like, what the heck? He didn't say heck. And I'm like, I don't know. She just jumped in here. Can you please go get some towels? (laughs) Should have taken advantage and like soaked her up. So at that point, I was trying to keep her dry. I was like, okay, well, then it was just too late. It was just on. So I was like, well, I said, while she's in here, I'm just going to soap her up. (laughs) (laughs) Here I am like washing this dog real quick. (laughs) So needless to say, I was ready to get out of the shower when she jumped in. So then I had to take another shower because I had a dog all over me. (laughs) Anyway, it just got to be hysterical. So, Oh, poor girl. I mean, picture this. And, I mean, she's a yellow lab, so it's not like right. she's small. No. <laughs> oh, so, man. we need to have some kind of, I don't know, is there, like, a dog therapist out there? We need to, like, send her. She needs some CBD or something. Right? But you just True don't story. know when a fly is going to show up, though. You don't have time to, like, medicate. Really? Right. It's not like a storm where you know it's coming. Right. And we thought it was gone. Like, I thought the fly had departed the seen evidently not my dog raven goes crazy over flies but she wants to get them like she runs oh, she w- like around the house like if she hears one she's like running and looking like where is it oh and she like, wants to get she, it yeah she wants to get it yeah that would be the antithesis of mine <laughs> yeah so raven needs to just come over and i was get gonna it say she should just invite her over and they could just like right. be yin and yang yeah 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 i like it anyway that was my Story last night that I'm not exactly sure what happened, but... But now you got a clean dog. I know. I woke up this morning. I'm like, Marles, you're so soft. She's all traumatized. <laughs> She's like... <laughs> now a bath's going to be even worse next time because she's going to remember the fly, the fly from last time. Associate it with jumping in or... Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> I've never seen some, something like it. Do you guys have a... Um, electric fence or anything with your horses Mm -mm. like 
Because you know how it kind of buzzes. Yeah. No, we don't. We used to, but we don't anymore. Well, Jen was thinking about getting a few hundred heads of cattle and putting an electric fence around them to yeah. aggravate her neighbor. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, they only do that in Wellston. <laughs> I'm kidding, everybody. Um, but no, so yeah, I, I can't tell you. Hmm. Anyway, that was my story for the night. Poor thing. I know. And it's like hilarious, but you like literally your heart breaks for her too. Yeah. My, and then Raven also, we always know when there is a smoke detector that's going bad because we know how it beeps. Yeah. Like just every once in a while, you never know. You're, you're like walking around waiting 10 minutes for it to beep again. Trying to Which one it is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Raven hates that. So like if it starts beeping, like she just starts pacing and panicking and like. And I'll tell Mike, I was like, eh, there's a smoke detector somewhere. Be Ben, you got to go figure out which one it is. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, she doesn't like it. Well, she, I mean, I hope that she's equally as adept at, 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 inept at uh, um, telling you if there's a fire. Well, that's what I figured. If it ever went off, she's going to freak out. So if we she's don't hear it, her she's mind. probably going to come and get us because it's going <laughs> off and pacing and things. So that's right. Either way, well, we will know. <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh, well, okay, so I'm, so, I'm done telling stories. <laughs> well, I found us um, something we could do if we, in my retirement, I sent it to my husband. Um, okay, I like I'm it. sharing it with everyone else, so maybe this won't be available. But there is an ultra-rich family offering a hundred up to $120,000 a year for a couple to take care of their private island in the Bahamas. Okay. Yep. I think, James, I sent you a picture of this private island, if, it, if you got it. If you wanted to live the island life, but you don't have the money for it, this is the perfect opportunity, because you go and you take care of their private island and their house, and you get paid for it. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, I don't, I couldn't sign up for that fast enough. Right. Now, you have to, like, clean. You have to maybe run an errand to pick people up from the airport every once in a while. Okay. You know, but you have to, like, make the beds and clean the bathrooms every once in a while. I mean, you're doing that anyway at your I, house. I know, right? Why not do it there? Look at that. Right? Seems, I, how many people are they hiring to take care of this facility? Well, you are joining a team, so it sounds okay. like to me like you might be the lead, like, like yeah. you're making sure stuff's getting done. That, like, that doesn't seem like a one-person job. No, because there's also, I guess, an estate in Florida that you also have to kind of be responsible for. So you have to manage that. Yeah, you're basically the manager, yeah. So I'm not seeing a pool, which is disappointing. Well, you got all that blue water, though, right? I mean, I know, but I want to sit at the pool and look at the blue look water. The water. Well, I wonder if you get to use the facilities. Yes, you get to live there. You get to live in the um, facilities. You might have to run some errands, it said. But basically, you just live there and they pay you to make sure everything's taken care of. Where do you apply for this? I'll send you the link. Okay. But it even says your work hours will span through Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 and occasionally on the weekends, and that would be considered overtime. So, I mean, that's just like a regular job. <laughs> this is so fantastic. Right? I wonder if they have any other estates. job for, like, retirement or something. <laughs> know, right? This sounds like the beginning <laughs> of a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> things are about, things seem way too way perfect. Too perfect. And then it takes a real dark turn <laughs> yeah. at the end of that Red first act. Yeah, you go, you like invite all your friends to your new place. Like, yeah, this is it's got, like I know what you did like, last summer. Look at my new job. This, this feels awesome. like the tropical version of Get Out. <laughs> yeah, right. You're probably right. So get that 120 up front. <laughs> Correct. And make sure that people know where you are. Where you're going. Where uh, you are. All I yeah. mean, it's, I mean not, you, uh, it's not like they can get to you. I mean, they got to take a helicopter to save you. You're yeah. a boat. Well, there's a driveway, so there's obviously some way to get on it, maybe. Yeah. There's one of those islands with a bridge. Does it say, like, what the island is or where exactly in the Bahamas? Skull um, Island. 
You're right. <laughs> Murder Island. <laughs> is that a movie? I don't Skull, know. But... Skull Island is where King Kong is from. Yes. Murder Island should be a movie. I don't know if Murder movie. Island is a real that could thing. Be, that could be the beginning of our, of our show there, though. Yep. It just says your core duties will include caring for a large country estate in Florida consisting of three houses, nine bathrooms, and a Bahamas estate consisting of four homes and four bedrooms in each home. So. Yep. Sold. I'll do it. Uh, we got a comment saying it's just The Shining, but with sharks and maybe pirates. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it's a private island in the Bahamas, and then um, Naples, Florida is where the estate is. In cool. Naples, Florida. I'll do it. Okay. I'll send you the link. All right. We're there, there man. An interview for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you're going to go to the Bahamas in Florida and work, you need to be buff, right? Well. You need to work out and, I mean, you you're know, taking care of, what was it, four homes, four <clears throat> bedrooms? You're probably going to be buff anyway. <laughs> you're you're going to get there sooner or later. You probably don't have a lot of time to eat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there is a dude in North Carolina. We need to do the math on this. Oh, math is hard. I know, math is hard. Here, let me do the math real quick. This guy, oops, hold on. Told you math is hard. All right. <clears throat> She's got it. Dude in North Carolina broke a Guinness World Record when he performed, are you ready for this, 3,050 push-ups in one hour. 3,050? Yeah, that is roughly, that's close to 51 a minute. 51 push-ups a minute for an hour. That's yeah, impressive. Yeah, just doing, doing 50 push-ups in a minute once, once would be really challenging. very hard. Yeah, he um, fell short in his attempt at a 12-hour push-up record. I mean, how do you do that? Um, why? He is, why do you do that? Well, the bigger question. I know you're going to find this as no shock, but he is a Marine veteran from Pine, Pineville, North Carolina. He started his record attempt by performing the 30,000 or 3,050 push ups in an hour. That's the previous record was 2,900. So he shattered that. Uh, then he kept on going for 11 more hours, attempting to break the record for the most push-ups in 12 hours, which is 19,325. And that no record... So. I hated that day in gym when we had to do push-ups. Oh, push-ups are awful. And then you had to do pull-ups. Remember the pull-up bar? Oh. Oh, it's impossible. I hated that day. And so. the day we had to run a mile. I hated that day, too. Oh, Yeah. Um, Maybe I'm not equipped to work at this Maybe house you in just the didn't like gym class. <laughs> I wasn't a fan so, of gym class. 19. A true statement. <laughs> so that's 1,610 push-ups an hour for 12 hours if you were to break that or to tie that record. 1,600 an hour? Yeah, 1,610 an hour. 10, don't um, he... Nope. Only got 16,400, so he's about 3,000 short of the second record. Slacker. I know. What a... Get, get it together, man. What a lazy sack of you-know-what. Um, there were some small little things we didn't account for as far as how much time between breaks and course, just the amount it takes on your body to do that long after completing the first world record, but it was a win, he says. His name is T. Shane Johnson. You go, T. Shane. I mean, I, again, doing fish fifty push-ups in a minute, let alone doing it for an hour, is I don't know if I can insane. do fifty push-ups in an hour. I <laughs> I don't know if I can do fifty push-ups. Period. <laughs> right. Even the cheating kind with the knees on the. I feel like you could do that because I did that for a while. Obviously, have, not anymore. I don't have much. But upper body strength, period. It is amazing. I will say 
how quickly you build that strength, like back up. Yeah, like you can, like in a week's time, you you'd probably quadruple what you're doing in right. in less time, just like that. Um, but yeah, I just good for him. I wonder if you just like get into a zone though, and it's just like after a while, your body's like you're just so used to doing push-ups that you it just doesn't just, fatigue yeah. you. I don't know. I feel like we should get the Guinness Book of World Records and go through it and see if there's one in there we can try to break. I think that's right. Didn't we set one in Jackson at the Apple Festival yeah, for apple, the bobbing? apple bobbing? That's fantastic. Most people apple bobbing or something like that. At one time. Yeah. What would be one we could eat? Like like eating cheese or something. Yeah. I don't I think your uh, doctor would probably advise you against <laughs> attempting to break any Guinness record for eating the most cheese or eating the largest piece of cheese or or the most pizza. <laughs> we could get in conjunction with like the filling station and Hoser's pizza and just see yeah. the most people eating pizza all at one time or something. Now that's the kind of record I want to break. I don't know. Ooh, I like it. Mm-hmm. Let's look that up. Is there a national pizza day? I like it. I'm sure there is. I'm game. I think I feel like you can get a lot of people to eat pizza. Uh, I think that wouldn't be hard. No. You know, there's a there's a lot of people that would volunteer for that. Do you have to actually physically have someone from like Guinness here to, or yeah, do you just record to, it? Or yeah, yeah, Guinness is kind of a commercial thing. You have to pay to have a representative come, and it's it's kind of a thing. Hmm. John Oliver did a really interesting episode about it a couple years ago about John how like, Oliver. uh talk show host he used to be on the daily show and now he has oh. his own show on hbo okay but he did a uh, a good show kind of showing what the guinness is a little bit of not quite as legit as they present themselves you know uh -huh. but uh it, it's pretty funny but, but basically he attempts to break some silly record <laughs> That some like dictator paid a bunch of money to have like oh. put into the Guinness Book of Records, <laughs> gotcha. and they refused to acknowledge <laughs> his new record. I mean, it was something like the largest pie crust or something stupid like this, <laughs> and some like some like South American dictator took a t whole bunch of pride in the fact that he had this record, <laughs> and Guinness refused to acknowledge John o Oliver <laughs> That's breaking so it. So crazy. Oh, Lordy. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We could move to the Bahamas and then break records in our spare time. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So I was looking up to see what happened on this day. Okay. Because, you know, yesterday I reported that Friends, you know, was the last of the last. Yes. In 1965, in the early morning hours of today, May 7th, a bleary-eyed Keith Richard awoke, grabbed a tape recorder, and laid down one of the greatest pop hooks of all time. The opening of I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Nice! <laughs> and then he promptly <laughs> fell back to sleep. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So he apparently when he woke up, the tape had run out. So we rewinded it. There was like 30 seconds of satisfaction and a very drowsy sort of rendition. And then it suddenly went to a guitar, like a clang of a guitar. So he had basically done 30 seconds of satisfaction and then he had done the riff for it and then went back to sleep. Isn't that nuts? Right? And so he took it um, to Mick Jagger later the day. Later that day, he just had the first bit and the riff. And Jagger said, that's terrible. It sounds like a country song. Not going to work. But they worked on it, and it's a huge hit now. Uh, yeah, I would think that they did all right with that one. <laughs> right? Thank you, Keith, for waking up. <laughs> I'm starting to think maybe I should start jotting down some of my in the middle I, of the night Like thoughts. the things that happen in the middle of the night? Yeah. That's so funny that you said that because I was just um, on the way in listening to, they were interviewing um, Chris... Um, Who's Coldplay? Chris, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow, Chris. Yep. yep. That guy. Yep. Coldplay Martin. guy. Martin. Yes, thank you. Chris wow. Martin. And he was Gosh. just talking about this new song that they just released. And he said he started by, he was like in a hotel. 
and he was like at the sink and he just started like like playing it on the sink top like he had yeah. a like an idea in his head so he put that down and then yeah. he moved on to something else and like but it was like funny it was like stuff in the hotel room and he was like yeah you never know how these guys are gonna come up with this stuff yeah the dream i had last night not quite going to be talked about in 40 years i don't think what was it i apparently had <clears throat> to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night so i had a dream that i was in fifth grade we were on a um we were on a field trip and we were in the bus and I had to go to the bathroom and I kept begging the teacher to let me. So the teacher finally took me, but nobody would tell us where our bathroom was. And I kept saying, you don't want me to be the girl that peed her pants <laughs> on the fifth grade field trip. And I woke up. It makes me why? think of Billy Madison. Right? Yeah. But why do, you, why do you dream the things you dream? It's so crazy. Pee in your pants is the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, Billy peed his pants, too. Right. Yeah, no, I... Who knows why things... Pop in your head like yeah. that. Yeah. So going back to Courtney's This Day in History, mm -hmm. I showed Courtney this earlier in the day. I'm, I'm having a bit of a having a moment i'm having a bit of a realizing i'm getting older moment 10 years ago today Aww. courtney's <laughs> brother and myself were celebrating our college graduation <laughs> how funny look how they look like little babies they do they do look like little babies I, that is your venton county high school principal there and total media's Awesome James I, Hamilton. I, I cannot How fathom funny. that it's that's been 10 years already. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I can remember thinking people were having like their 20th year high school reunion and they were like one foot in the grave. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was like. I like last year would have been my 25th. Yeah. <laughs> James was making me check for his make sure all his hair was still there this morning and Did have, he was having a moment he was sad. oh honey it's okay <laughs> just remember no matter how old you get we're always older <laughs> right i guess so <laughs> if that makes you feel any better there's also people still very much younger than you yeah. <laughs> that's true too yep. do you guys ever watch scrubs not really they did one bit where uh like the main char character, he was playing the oldest pilgrim and he was like 22. And all the other pilgrims <laughs> were like 12 year olds. <laughs> and he was the oldest pilgrim. <laughs> I feel like the oldest pilgrim today. <laughs> That's awesome. Aw, poor guy. I feel like he needs a hug. Right. Well, happy 10 year um, anniversary yes. of your graduation. Yeah your graduation that's yeah. so fun it's something that's right <laughs> poor thing he was on cloud nine yesterday i know i was doing good yesterday <laughs> yesterday till he found out i'm like man i'm old <laughs> flipping us the bird <laughs> right you're too old to do that, James. <laughs> you I'm can't a mature do that adult. anymore. No doubt. You have to be I'm mature. a mature adult. I don't even know what TikTok is. I'm an old man. <laughs> That's how I know I'm old. I never played Fortnite and I don't have a TikTok account. <laughs> True that. I got you. So what is, what's everybody do, um, you know, for like Mother's Day? It does look like, unfortunately, there's some rain in the forecast. So what are some alternative things... Um, that one could do well we are all getting together at my house i think almost all of us have been vaccinated all of the adults at least so we are just hanging out at my house we're gonna get some pizza and just that sounds good yeah hang out mm. it would be nice if it was a nice day because we could hang out outside yeah. on the deck but it is what it is. It's nice that we'll just be able to get together. I'm really mad because I ordered this really, really pretty new patio umbrella specifically because of Mother's Day because my umbrella was just had shattered into a million different pieces. Uh -huh. 
and it came yesterday and I was so excited. I put it out and it's like this beautiful turquoise color. I'm like, oh, look, it's going to be so pretty. And we can sit out under the new umbrella and not so much. I mean, you can. It's an umbrella. I mean, you can. It just may be. Just don't get out up. from under it. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're stuck there forever. Luckily, I sprung for the nine footer instead of the eight. There you oh, go. Big spender. I know, right? Oof. So, no, unfortunately, that. yeah, my mommy's in the hospital right now. So we're hoping mm -hmm. she gets out by then. And she is, um, has to have a little procedure done. She, I'm sure she wouldn't mind me telling. She, um, where she's on a lot of arthritis medicine, it, it kind of makes her stomach bleed. So they have to go in so often and kind of cauterize some of the bleeds and things like Aww. that. So she's uh, been there for a couple of days and they're going to, supposed to be, as we speak, um, going in to do that procedure today. So we're hoping she gets to come home tomorrow and that she can be here for Mother's Day. Yeah, that's not yeah. any fun. I hope she recovers quickly. They were supposed to do it yesterday and didn't do it. And boy, is, my mother doesn't get really mad ever. <laughs> She was pretty hot yesterday when I talked to her. My grandma was that way. Like, she was a very, very, um, my grandma Betty, she, very nice lady. But boy, buddy, when she got in the hospital and you did not do what you were supposed to do, or when she wanted out, she wanted out. Yeah, like, I mean, really, you get there it. were words that came out of her mouth that would <laughs> never, like, ever come out of you? grandma Betty's mouth. And you knew it was time to figure out how to get it done. <laughs> Oh, shoot. And to let you know, she's not in a local hospital. So I know I'm not bashing anyone. She is up in Columbus. So um, anyway, yeah, but and you get it. Nobody wants to be in the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. No, like no, especially now. Like, are they allowing visitors or anything? in? Or? So they are allowing one visitor per day. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's kind of like. Anyway, yeah. so. James, do you have any alternative plans in case it rains? Uh, I think Anything we are fun? going to order takeout from Dakota's. Ooh. Have uh, steaks and potatoes kind of thing. Nice. I think that's their plan. May maybe try to squeeze in a shopping trip for mom, but I don't know. Gram Grandma's health is, she, she needs someone to kind of stay with her. So I don't yeah. know if we'll have time to do that or not. We enjoy, um, you don't really tell grandma stories on the air, but. Um, James has got some fun grandma stories. I've got a good picture, <laughs> Mother's Day picture I can She's show you real quick. This, when I was taking my stroll down memory lane uh, with the graduation pictures, <laughs> here's grandma Aww. and my sister after an eye appointment rocking their, uh, those glasses, <laughs> sunglasses that they give you that fit over your when regular they glasses. your eyes. Yeah. Nice. Those are awesome. That's a pretty good granny. one. I yeah. love it. Yeah, she's... <laughs> kids do the darndest things or say the darndest things. James's grandma says the darndest things. <laughs> she's funny. She's a hoot. For sure. All right. Well, we do need to thank some of our friends. Like, I did want to give a shout out to... Well, we talked about Hoser's Pizza earlier. I mean, all of our sponsors, that's a great place. Like, if you have not shops for your mother or whoever is your mother in your life whether it's your mother or your grandmother or your, or your aunt father or... your aunt your best friend whoever right that deserves to be celebrated sunday you still have time that's right and you can go to our local you know friends and there's plenty of that to go around here and uh please shop locally if you possibly can but uh you you know you could go out to carmen's and buy your new car i mean i mean i'm I there would, i wouldn't turn a new car down Right? That little beetle is awful cute out there. Oh, I got the little eyelashes on Yes. It. Courtney and I are going <laughs> to sneak out and put eyelashes on it. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, visit Carmen or check out their website, CarmenChooseCards.com, for more information on the vehicles that they have on the lot. Um, also, uh, Callahan Hardware. You think you can't buy something for mom out of Callahan Hardware, you're sadly wrong. There's all kind of great things that your mom would enjoy. And they, don't forget they have that custom engraving um, where you can get those plaques or a cutting board or something like that as well. So great, great people. Um, and also Chip and Kathy Smalley, if you purchase something for mom and you want it custom engraved and <clears throat> like uh, picture frames or, um, 
you know, there's all kind of things that you could buy for mom that like a little locket. Yeah, like and they can still get you bracelet, jewelry, stuff like yep. that. Yep. So go visit or call uh, Chip and Kathy Smalley, 988-2841, and they'll hook you up. All right, don't forget your weather forecast. A um, little bit of rain in the forecast. Does it look like rain tomorrow? A little bit cooler temperatures and that stupid pesky chance of rain on Sunday, but the highs on Sunday around 66. So hopefully the rain holds off and you could still, that's certainly warm enough to be outside and Go to the uh, turkey festival. Do some turkey festival in too. And um, that's the thing also real quick. I think we have the schedule here, don't we? Yep. Okay, tonight at the Turkey Festival, Eric Atkinson at 7, the Michelle Robinson Band um, at 9. That's tonight on the stage. Tomorrow, before the parade at 3, the Nostalgics Big Band. Um, then the parade is, I believe, at 6, isn't it? Typically. And then the Chase Band at 7.30 and Red Planet at nine so there's all your entertainment there and those are the guys that know where bigfoot's at and they know so. where bigfoot is so there you go and the baby contest don't forget and the little miss gobbler and gobblerette um all there on sunday and the car show on sunday as well at um the turkey festival so and i think it's in the back of the library uh, yes. parking lot so right so there behind the, the you've been missing live music and itching for some live yes. music it's gonna be nice. I um, mean, it'll be a little chilly, but put your coat on and right. Take an umbrella. Nice. You won't be sweating. And you can get some fair and festival food that none of us got last year. So yes. super exciting. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all of you folks out there. Whether you're a mother or not, you still make a difference in somebody's life. And and. Um, so thank you to, to all you lovely ladies out there for that. All right. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday. Bye. Bye.